you can see the cupboard up there, I need to drop it as the doors won't close. I just need to connect the oven and the um, gas. There's the fridge. Um, the oven is just here. Uh, that won't take long. And I need to connect the uh, taps and the drain to the um, sink, which shouldn't take too long. I have that is the cupboard up there. I've got to also um, lower that as the plaster behind it isn't holding that strongly, and I have to inject some cement in some quick cement. Um, so both these cupboards are going to have to come down, and I have to lower them. That one because the um, beam sags, or it doesn't actually sag, it's just the way it is. It's just got this bulge underneath. And um, when I went to put the doors on, they won't close. So we're not far off. And then I also got the table done and some chairs. As you can see, there is still obviously, as we said, the uh, some skimming that needs to be done. I've skimmed basically here, which is all the way behind all the cupboards are, so that that doesn't have to be skimmed again. Um, but then I was thinking I'd have to skim where the doors are, because um, once the doors go up and the frames go round the door, um, you won't be able to skim behind there. So uh, we've got a door here. And also there's a problem, well, problem, a plonker of the um, builder has, I hadn't really noticed how close everything was, but the um, uh, toilet sink and shower all squashed together. He pushed them down to allow the door to open in to the bathroom. I said to him, was it just simpler to get a door that would open outwards, which is what I've now done. Um, so the door open this way. Okay. This is shot from another angle. Okay, it's a very nice cover actually. It's quite sturdy. Um, it has a lead that's had, so it's quite long. Um, the chairs are also very simple and nice to sit on, so they can drop off. Um, but I just have to say this. Um, now another thing I think as well, if you look at that cupboard, also you can see the doors are slanted a bit. The problem is the door behind is not straight. Um, so basically the back of it I've had to put a uh, rail behind to try and straighten it out. But basically I suppose I change the shape slightly of the, of the cupboard and so the doors don't hang properly. I'll see if I can register it. Well I've seen people register, I just need to waste some time with a screwdriver. One other thing I advise is that you close the water off when you leave the property. This is the key here to the water meter. And um, this is the water meter. And you can see the red tap when it's facing that direction, like the pipe. Like that, it means that water is running. And you also see that the meter is running because I've asked the children to open the water upstairs and when you close it when you're going you just turn it like that have you turned the tap on yeah we did it, did you close it yeah no no keep it open a second and then in here that's probably too dark to see you have your hot water boiler and to get hot water you need to plug it in here but you must always remember that you need to have, there you are, the lights just come on, water in the system, otherwise you will burn the boiler. And I'd also disconnect that when you're turning the water off so that in case water drops, pressure drops in the um, plumbing, it won't burn also because you'll be um, consuming a lot of electricity. Well, now I'm just talking on the video. One other thing is that you'll see, hopefully, it's not too dark, there's a dial underneath the boiler. That regulates, that's to register the temperature that the hottest water will be. Now that will actually be scorching hot, but because it's not a very big boiler, if you're having 
two or three showers, you'll then have to wait probably 20 minutes or so for the, heat to, the, for the water to heat up again. You can see up here what the temperature is when it gets up into the different black areas, it's ha depending on how hot it is. So white's cold, grey is warmish and black is very hot. Ah, one other thing, if you have a look, this is basically cold water, no, this one is cold water going in and this is the hot water coming out. This is a safety relief, pressure relief valve and sometimes these types of boilers, if the pressure, especially if the temperature here is set to very high, which you can just turn here, um, they can start to drip a bit because when they're, they're heating obviously the pressure increases and it releases a bit of um, pressure. So you may want to adjust this a bit and reduce it if you see that it's dripping here. I'll turn it off now. Just by pulling the plug out. Okay. And there's Nicholas and Georgina. Electricity. Okay, Georgina is now going to demonstrate how you turn off the trip switch. Okay. Better than this. Yes. And then you turn off this last one at the end. Okay, very good. And there you go, the lights go off. These two, this one is for the lights. So you can actually have the lights off if you just need to disconnect a light or something without turning off the power from the um, sockets. So your fridge will keep going or whatever. Or you could have the oven on. This is for the sockets. There's one called C16, which is basically 16 amperes, which is for sockets, and C10, which is for your lights. Okay, when you leave, you, another way is to do it by pressing this button. Or you can turn it off by the meter. Let's have a look at the meter. Um. There's the meter. You just turn that. That is, mm -hmm. yeah, that's up. That means it's on. And, and then down is off. off. Go on, fill it up. Okay. Right, so all the lights are off now. And we're closing up and ready to go.